my mother, Eunice Johnson, was a true visionary. She was really putting together a show with a vision of style. Somewhere deep in her was the quest for knowledge about culture and about art. And all things that were beautiful and creative were things that were very attractive to her. You can see that running through Ebony every single month, every single issue. And every ounce of sophistication, elegance, class, style that runs through Johnson Publishing Company really started with Eunice Johnson. She wanted to take us someplace else. She wanted to take you on a trip with her. So she wanted to take you to Paris. And since you couldn't go to Paris with her, she was going to bring Paris to you. Yes, it was glamorous, and you're visiting all these fabulous houses, these couture houses with all these beautiful women and beautiful clothes. But, you know, here she was, a complete anomaly. They didn't know who Eunice Johnson was. They didn't know what Ebony Magazine was. You know, as far as they were concerned, African Americans had no money and had no interest in fashion or any interest in style. But I think the way she carried herself, she had um, impeccable taste, impeccable manners, but she also had drive and determination. And so my mother had to break down those barriers and she did it every single time and every single trip. Her vision for the show was to bring to the African-American audience the best fashion at that time. It was to bring them a fantasy. She looked for the most outrageous, the most theatrical piece, so that the things that you would see, you wouldn't see anyplace else. To Mrs. Johnson, a showstopper was something that was just dripping with grandeur and elegance. It had to make the, the woman look like she was wearing a million dollars. She would put a striking, you know, yellow Solara or Dior gown on the darkest model she had because she knew that would be controversial and it also told a story that you can wear anything. There's nothing you can't do, there's nothing you can't wear because it's how you carry yourself. We had black as beautiful down way before it got coined as sort of a phrase in the 60s. So not only did she give opportunities for models, she had opportunities for African-American designers. They are showing their clothes alongside Saint Laurent and Givenchy, and so the show to her wasn't balanced unless we could show our designs. She had opportunities for stylists and for wardrobe mistresses, all of which were African-American. And remember now, this is for a charity in each city. And whether it was a university or if it was a hospital, anything that could help the African-American community, my mother was 100% on board. say that they could put on a fashion show for 50 odd years and keep it going every year? Nobody. Who could say that they've raised over 50, 60 million dollars for most incredible charities? Nobody. Who could say that everybody in the world, whether they were white, black, yellow, green, they came to see the Ebony Fashion Fair? I think she was the one of a kind. I mean, there was, there was nobody in the world of fashion like her. I think she had a passion for fashion, definitely. And she just passed that on to the rest of us and made us realize it's possible. She took the responsibility to say, there is another world beyond your community, and that you should embrace the idea that you can also strive for that. I really believe my mother's legacy is that she brought beauty and style and sophistication to an African-American audience. Whether you're from a small town in Mississippi or you're from New York City, it's all about how you feel about yourself and the vision that you have for yourself. For her, there were no barriers. There were no barriers.